Hey guys, welcome to Programming Knowledge. In this video, we'll be making our first programming project, which is essentially going to be a console based tic tac toe game. So, in case you're not familiar with the game, let me just quickly walk you through the game. The game has a 3 cross 3 board and 2 players who play alternatively. So, uh, the objective of the players is that they need to fill one of the rows or columns or the diagonals with their marker. So if I just start the game with a computer, you can see that we are playing alternatively and our goal is to just uh, fill up one of the rows or columns or diagonals with our marker. So here if you see the computer has managed to fill the row with its marker, so it gets to win the game. So we are going to implement this game on the console and well we won't be implementing such a sophisticated system where the computer can play although I will be giving the intuition required for building such a system towards the end but what we will be implementing is a two player game so if you go over here and then change this mode to play against a friend you can see that you make both the moves by yourself so we will be implementing this but I will also be giving you the intuition required to implement a system which can think and then make moves towards the end. Right? So let's get started. So first uh, create a new project naming tic-tac-toe. So the project title is tic-tac-toe and uh, let me just save it in my desktop and then click next finish. So now we have our project with our source file. Right, so let me just uh, make the text a little bit bigger. Now we'll start off by creating the board. So there are different ways to implement this board. You can think of this as an array of nine elements, and then three of them are stacked together as a row, or you can even think of this as a three cross three matrix. Well, I will be implementing this particular board as a 3 cross 3 matrix because we can uh, understand rows and columns better by looking at the indexes rather than the slots. But you are free to implement it as a 1D array also. That is uh, by creating 9 elements and then stacking 3, 3 vertically. Alright, so uh, I have managed to draw this uh, implementation over here. So what we will be essentially building is a 3 cross 3 array like this and then uh, these are the indexes and since we cannot uh, detect mouse clicks on our console we will be numbering our slots so let's say the user wants to enter his marker over here so the user can press 5 and then we will remove this 5 and then put marker over here let's say x so the 5 goes and then we put x over here so that's how we are going to implement it but uh, there are other libraries which I encourage you to look up which uh, support mouse clicks on consoles too. So uh, in case you are interested to implement such a system where you can click on the area and then your marker appear. So you can uh, check out those libraries. Well uh, discussing those libraries are well beyond the scope of this course so we are not going to do that. So for now we will be implementing this particular system. right? So let's start off by creating the board which is a two dimensional character array. So let's call this array as board and then this is going to be two dimensional and every dimension will have three three elements. So this is a three cross three board. Let me just put it over here. So even if you don't put it, it doesn't matter. I'm just putting it so that uh, we be clear with our implementation. So let me just name the slot. So one, two, three and then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 so notice that I am numbering the slots as characters because if you put characters over there it will take it as an ASCII value I'm sure you know this right now let us quickly make a function to draw the board so let's say void uh, draw board and what this function is going to do is that uh, it is going to draw the board neatly for us so something like this so uh, these two vertical lines and then these two horizontal lines separate the rows and columns. We will be uh, drawing that over here. So you can use a loop but since there are only 9 elements let's just hard code it. So uh, board 0 0. Uh, let us give a space before board 0 0 so that it doesn't get squashed up to the left. All right? Board 0 0 and then uh, we have a space vertical line and then board uh, 0 1 space vertical line and then board 0 2 and then we have the next line because we just completed the row what we did is we just printed this row with these two vertical bars now we need to put a horizontal bar 
so uh, let us just put that see out uh, horizontal wire is just going to be lines this is all completely designing you can do it as you want right and these steps continue for the next two rows too. so control c b b and for the last row we don't need the horizontal lines and here you just need to change the road number so this becomes two this becomes one 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 over here two and two so now if we call this particular function let's just remove this and call draw board now if you run this uh, we will be getting our board so uh, well the horizontal lines became extra how many characters are these three characters or more so let us just remove those three characters over here and then over here so this board looks much better right so we have our board ready now uh, how do we put data inside this board so let's make another function to do that let's say void uh, place marker which is going to take a slot number right because the user is going to enter the slot number now our task is to convert the slot number into the row and column number right if you are using a one dimensional array that is pretty easy you just need to do slot minus one to insert, insert that into the particular position right so suppose you want to insert it into this particular position and if you are using a one dimensional array this is the fourth position right because array indexes start from zero so zero one two three four and you just need to do slot minus one but since we are using a two dimensional array we need to find out a way uh, by which we can convert this uh, slot number into a row and column number so what we can do to find the row number is that we can use an observation that all the rows start from a number which is just one greater than the previous multiple of three so if you observe over here one is nothing but zero times three plus one 4 is 1 times 3 plus 1 and then 7 is 2 times 3 plus 1. So what you can do is you can uh, get the row number by dividing the slot number by 3. But then again if the slot number itself is a multiple of 3 then you need to subtract 1 from the slot number. That is if you take example of 6. So if you do 6 over 3 it is 2 right. But we need it in slot number 1. So we need to subtract 1 from that. So what I mean is if this particular slot percentile 3 equal to 0 that is if the slot is a multiple of 3 then slot equal to slot over 3 so this is this and then minus 1 so this will give us the slot number else slot is directly slot over 3 so this should give us the uh, particular row number sorry uh, let us take a variable uh, just directly changing the slot so if slot percentile 3 is 0 then uh, row is going to be this particular value or else row is going to be this value now let us just see whether our row works correctly or not and uh, let us just call it with place marker let's say 8 right now if you run this you should be getting 2 which is correct right because 8 is in row number 2 now to get the column number you can do something similar to that so to observe the columns these are nothing but reminders which you get after dividing by 3 right so you can do the same thing so let's take another variable to store the column and column is nothing but slot modulus 3 so this should give us the reminder so if you look over here uh, let me just pull up that image now if you say 3 then our row is going to be 3 over 3 and since 3 is a multiple of 3 so it is going to be 3 over 3 minus 1 which is equal to 0 and then um, our column is going to be 3 modulus 3 which is going to be 0 but that is not our column we need 2 so what essentially we need to do is if it is a multiple of 3 if the slot is a multiple of 3 we need to put it in the end or else that particular logic will work alright so over here what you need to do is if uh, this particular slot 
is again a multiple of 3 then uh, our column is going to be 2 all right or every time when the value is a multiple of 3 you are going to put that uh, in the last column and then you can divide this uh, slot number by 3 and then get the remainder that is going to be your column number and then uh, get the remainder and then subtract 1 from that that is because we are not considering the uh, multiples of 3 right we are leaving the multiples of 3 so we need to subtract 1 let's say 4 so 4 divided by 3 you get a remainder 1 and then 1 minus 0 is 0 which is the column number of 4 right so this is how you get the column number so uh, let uh, let us just quickly uh, rewrite this with uh, fewer conditions so row is going to be uh, this particular value right irrespective of uh, whether slot is going to be a multiple of 3 or not if it is a multiple of 3 we can just subtract 1 from this value so if slot modulus 3 is equal to 0 then row becomes row minus 1 and then column becomes 2 right this is only when the slot which you are giving is a multiple of 3 or else or let us define the column before using it or else what happens is columns become slot modulus 3 minus 1 so uh, first we perform slot modulus 3 and then we subtract 1 from that alright so this is how we can get the row and column from our slot number if you now check out the row and uh, put a comma over here and then column and then let us call with a so we should be getting 2 comma 1 which is what we got right because 8 is in the second row first column we can try it with some multiple of 3 let's say 9 and then try to run this we should be getting 2 comma minus 1 now why did that happen well that is because we are trying to modify the column even after it is getting modified over here right we are modifying the column when slot modulus 3 is equal to 0 and then again we are modifying it over here so we need to put it in the else part alright now it should work fine now let us just close this and try it again uh, if I press F9 so here you can see it gave us 2 comma 2 which is correct so uh, now we know that our logic for getting the row and column is correct so we can proceed by putting our marker into the board so how do we track which marker to put so let us create a global variable for tracking the marker let's say current marker and let us set this to some value or else we'll set it while we are asking we'll set it while we are asking the user to choose the marker right? and we will also have a current player right so we need to even uh, track the current player to uh, check which player is playing right so we have one marker and one player now what we are going to do is we need to just put board of this particular row and then this particular column is going to be the current marker so now we have successfully placed it let's place a marker over here and then try to draw the board I'll, we'll draw a board over here too so draw a board uh, and then we'll put a new line so that we don't get confused between the two boards so let's uh, just uh, say that current marker is x for now and if we try to run this you will be seeing that in place of 9 now there is an x right so now we know that this particular function works we can place our marker on the board now let us make a function to determine who won the game right so let's call this function uh, win or winner something like this and uh, we will put the data type to care I will just explain why we are putting the data type to care right now so this this is not going to take anything this is going to work on the global board variable which is this which is an array right so what we are going to do is we are going to check all the rows the columns and the diagonals and see whether uh, those have the same value of marker right so in case they are numbers they are going to be different so nobody won and in case they have this x's or o's uh, stacked up horizontally vertically or diagonally it means that that particular player won right so now since we are getting the winner we can either put it true or false to determine whether the game is won or not but to determine who won the game we need to again check whether uh, that particular marker is an x or o right so what we are going to do in this function is instead of checking twice we will directly return the marker of the winner so by marker we can identify which player won and then we can congratulate him or her right that is pretty easy now 
So uh, to do that, let us quickly run a for loop. So int i equal to zero, i is less than three, i plus plus. And inside this, we are going to check for rows first. So uh, if uh, this particular board of i and then zero is equal to board i one and board i one is equal to board i two, then return the current marker, right? Because uh, we are going to check whether the player wins uh, immediately after he places the marker. So if uh, this particular condition is satisfied, then uh, it means that one of the rows has been occupied by this current player, so he is the winner. And you can also check for the uh, columns in the same loop. So what you need to do for the columns is the same thing, but just the eyes get shifted to the second dimension. So since I am checking the rows, I am just putting i in the first dimension. For columns, what we need to do is we need to remove the i and place it over here. So let me just cut and paste it. And this goes over here. And this goes over here. So now we have successfully checked whether uh, the rows or columns are filled. For diagonals, you can just hard code it since there are only two diagonals. So if board of 0, 0 is equal to board of 1, 1 and board of 1, 1 is equal to board of 1, 2. So what we are doing is we are essentially checking whether this value is equal to this value and then this value equal to this value. If these two conditions are true, it means that these three values are equal and it means that the player has won. So if these three, if this condition turns out true, then the current player has won. Current player or marker, oh, uh, since I'm using the player as a integer, I need to return int, not char. So uh, over here, it is not current marker, but current player. You can return uh, either of them, right? You can return current marker or current player. It, it just depends upon you, right? So now we need to check this condition for the second diagonal. So this goes and then for the second diagonal, the so coordinate are 0, 2, 1, 1 and 2, 0. So 0, 2, 1, 1 remains the same and 1, 1 is equal to 2, 0. Then you return the current player. Right. So now what if nobody won? So you need to return something. So what we'll return is we'll just return 0. 0 means nobody won and if it is either 1 or 2 it means that player 1 has won or player 2 has won. So now we have the winner. Uh, let's just create an arbitrary board and then check who won right. So uh, let's uh, place these markers right. Place marker at 9, 8 and 7. So it means that x has won. So 9, 7 and then place marker at 8 and our current player is going to be 1. Right now, if you run this, okay, the spelling is wrong. Current player, and if I try to run this, so here you can see I have placed three x's over here. Now, if I try to call this function, which is uh, winner, and try to print the data over here, so you can see that it has outputted one. One is the current player who has just put three x's in a row so it works for row let's just check for column column is um, let's say zero sorry one and then four and seven so this is the first column and we'll run this so it has returned one again and let's check for the diagonal so that is one five nine so now uh, you see that doesn't work for diagonal that is because we messed up the logic somewhere let's check that out oh it is not 1 2 it is 2 2 over this right so that's a small mistake i made oh, now if you again run this this should work now so here you can see it has outputted one and let's keep some arbitrary uh, place let's say 1 6 9 so this shouldn't result in a win so this should give us zero which it gives so now we can see that our winner function is pretty much validated and it works right so now let us quickly make the interface we need so let's call this interface game all right and in this let us define our current player and marker so 
will give a choice for the player one to choose this marker and player two automatically gets the other marker so what we are basically trying to do is if the player the first player has a choice of playing x or an o right so that's what we are going to do so uh, player one uh, let's say choose your marker uh, you can come up with your own sentences over here it doesn't really matter so uh, this will enter our current marker right or uh, let's just keep a player one marker uh, let's create a character which says marker marker of player one so uh, we are going to get this particular marker so marker player one now our current player is going to be one and then the current marker is going to be the marker which the player one chose right now if you observe this game right there can be at most nine moves for this game to end up in a tie right so in case somebody wins it's going to be less than nine moves but if it is going to, for a tie it's going to be nine moves in total so what you can do is you can run a loop till nine moves so int i equal to zero i is less than nine and then i plus plus and inside this what you need to do is let's first draw the board or what we can do is we can first uh, take input from the user and then draw the board so uh, for the first time let us just draw the board outside loop and then for the subsequent moves we will draw the board after the slot is entered so we will ask the player to enter the slot so see out uh, its player and then which player is that current player current players um, let's say turn so enter your slot and now we are going to get a slot so in slot c in slot and you know what to do you just need to place the marker so place marker in this particular slot and then we will draw the board so draw board so now if we run this particular board we will just call the function game to play a game right so we'll just remove all this and then just say game over here so now if you run this what you will be uh, getting is player one choose a marker it's going to be x and then uh, it's my turn so let's say two now you see that the player is not changing that's because we did not uh, write code to change the player and the marker we need to swap the players and markers right because the players and markers are going to change alternatively and uh, here you can see that uh, the slot has been accepted perfectly and then the x has come in place of 2 so uh, here you can see that it works and then if i win somewhere it is not going to stop and then it's again going to continue right so this game is never going to stop so we need to uh, fix all these issues so we'll do that one by one first let's take care of the issue where the player and markers are not changing so let's create a function quickly which swaps the player and marker so let's say void uh, swap player and uh, marker so this is the name of our function so what it does is pretty simple if uh, the current player if the current marker is x then change the marker to o current marker becomes o or else you just change the current marker to x right this is just swapping the markers and the same goes with players too so if the current player is 1 then current player becomes 2 or else uh, current player remains 1 so uh, here we have successfully swapped the player and marker so once uh, everything is done what we do is before drawing the board we just swap the player right so swap player and marker and this should do the job now let's test this so if i run this uh, let's choose x now it's asking player one turn enter your slot let's say one and now player two turn enter your slot if i enter two you can see that two is occupied by an o now so now uh, we have successfully created a system where the players are changing and the markers are also changing and now we need to take care of the issue that once we are winning it is not stopping right so we need to check whether somebody won or not so over here what we can do is we can uh, create a variable 
for storing the value which this particular function returns right this winner function returns it's going to return a value uh, in the range of 0 1 2 right it's not going to return any other value so let's just create a variable which shows the winner so let's say a uh, player 1 this is the integer value and what we need to do is after placing the marker we need to check whether he won or not so player 1 equal to this particular winner right and now here if this particular value which is player 1 is equal to 1 which means that player 1 1 right so see out the player 1 1 and then let's say congratulations and what you need to do is just break out of the loop because we don't need to continue the game after somebody has won right so you can just break out of this loop and uh, over here the same thing goes with player 2 too, right you if player 1 is equal to 2 then you say uh, see out the same message just we need to change the player 2 and all these things remain the same so control C and control V and uh, over here instead of 1 we just need to put 2 so in case nobody won it either means that the game can go on or if it has reached 9 moves it means that it's a tie right automatically if you are uh, playing for 9 moves and you make the 9th move and still nobody wins it's going to be a tie so what you need is if uh, this particular winner condition which is player 1 is equal to a zero after completing this game then we need to say that nobody wins or let's say uh, that is a tie game right so uh, what this will do is in case nobody wins even after nine moves and this comes out of the loop it will then say that it is a tie game right uh, so suppose uh, player won one and then it bro broke out of the loop then uh, if you just put this particular thing without this if condition what will happen is it will print both the messages at once right so it will say player won one and then again it will say th that is a tie game we don't want that to happen that's why we have put a if condition to check whether it's a tie or not and then we will say it was a tie game right that will take care of all the issues hopefully so let's just uh, try with o this time and uh, it's player one's turn so let's enter one two three so you can see it's filling alternatively and four five six seven and it says player one one congratulations but uh, we cannot see what happened over here that is because we are not drawing the board immediately right so what we'll do is we'll shift this draw board function before uh, this particular winning condition right so what will happen is once i place this uh, marker i will just draw the board so now if i run this uh, let's say x and then one two three four five six seven and now you see that player one has won that is because this particular diagonal which i'm highlighting has been filled up by x's so player one one in case you fill it up with o it means that player two has won and in case you don't fill it up uh, let's take a draw case uh, let's say uh, we play for nine moves so x uh, let's just quickly put the numbers one two three so in case to draw we need to put five and then four six and eight seven nine right so now you can see that uh, nobody has won even after nine moves so it says that is a tie game and the board is filled up so our game works perfectly for now right so there is a minor bug in this game for what what we did is so let's say i put my marker in the first slot right and now it is player two turn and what i will do is i will again press one so what will happen now is if you observe the x has gone and then o has taken its place it means i have just overwritten it right we won't we don't want that to happen we don't want to move the markers away from their places so to fix that what we need to do is we need to check whether that slot is empty or not that is if that slot contains some character which is not an integer it means that it is a marker right and we don't want to change that marker so what we do is where we are placing the marker here what we need to do is we need to put this only when that particular row and column is not filled up so if that board and column if 
board of this row and then column is not equal to an x and it is also not equal to an o so board of uh, row and column is not equal to an o then you will be filling it up with this particular marker or else you won't fill it up right so let us return true or false over here and then we'll print the message over there so uh, we'll make this boolean or bool and over here if this is the case then uh, you first place the marker and then return true saying that uh, this operation was uh, completed successfully or else what you need to do is you return false over here and uh, here once we are uh, placing the marker where did we place it we were placing it over here right so let's say boolean uh, status or you can directly put this in the if statement also right so if this particular condition is true then we don't have to do anything we have to print a message only when it's false so let's put a not over here so if not place marker of slot that is if this condition is not true then we need to say uh, something so let's say uh, that slot is occupied and then uh, try another slot so uh, this particular message will print and then uh, we need to decrease i by 1 uh, that is because we need to uh, give the player another chance right we can't just switch the players right there so we just decrease i by 1 and then we just put continue so that all these statements are skipped and then it goes back to the execution so let us just uh, neatly arrange this indent this code so we print the message we decrease i so that the value of i remains same once continuous and contract right because if it is decreased decreased over here it will go back and it will increase over here so effectively the value of i remains same and it should work now and another thing is let's say the player entered some pretty big slot right let's say 100 or something so we need to take care of that too so if slot is less than 9 less than 1 and if slot is sorry or if slot is greater than 9 we should not accept it so we need to do the same thing just the message changes control C and then control V and here uh, you need to say that is an invalid slot right so that slot is invalid and then you try another slot and we just put continue so that uh, the player doesn't change so this should do for us now if you execute this you will be having a functional tic-tac-toe game over here so it's asking player 1 choose your marker it's going to be x and now it's player 1's turn so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so now player 1 1 that's because of this particular diagonal and let's uh, make player 2 also win so let's try it once again so let's say uh, x again so now it is going to be 1, 2, 3 and then 5, 4 and then what is that? 8. Now you can see player 2, 1 congratulation that is because I have filled up this particular column with O's. Right. So uh, in case you wanted to implement a AI kind of a thing where uh, the computer plays, you can do that. Well, uh, we are just going to implement a pseudo AI, not the original one. So this is not going to think much, it is just going to randomly place it. So in case you want to generate random slot, what you need to do is you need to include another header file called stdlib which is standard library. You can include this one or C stdlib which is the C++ version of the C standard library. So these libraries are nothing but uh, they are from C language. So in case you are you want using it in C++ you just add a C over here to indicate that that is a C library right now to generate random numbers what you have is you have a function called rand which will directly give you a random number right just print rand over here and here you can see it just uh, printed 41 onto the screen now if I execute it again you will see that the same 41 is over here if you close this whole program and then uh, rerun it it is going to give you a different number but again uh, till you don't remove this whole code from the memory it's going to be the same number again and again and again so to take care of that what you have is something called as a seed 
so for seeding the random function seeding is basically you will be giving different starting points to that random function to uh, generate different numbers every time you call it so to seed the random number you call the function srand and inside this you put some number which constantly keeps changing right so let's say 1 over so let's say 10 over here and then if i try to run this you will be getting some other number let's say 71 over here and if i put some other number let's say 1 over here now and then try to run it you will be getting another number which is 41 but we can't change this again and again right we need a way to change this particular number which will generate different numbers every time so to do that we can use time right so time is constantly changing it is not constant so what you can do is if you pass in time over here as an integer it will give you different random numbers without you having to change this manually so to do that we need to include another header file which is called time right so c time right so same reason why we are using over here it is time.h or c time both are same and you go over here and then what to do is instead of 1 you just pass in time and then pass in null as a parameter we will talk about this null when we are discussing pointers but for now just remember this is the syntax and uh, this is how we call the function for time right for getting time as an integer now if we run this you will be getting different uh, numbers over here every time so this is 9170 if i execute it again you will be getting some other number 9187 right so to generate random numbers in a range we want it in a range right we want random numbers between 1 and 9 so to do that what you can do is you have to use a formula there is no direct way to get random numbers in c++ in a particular range but what you can do is you can use a formula which states that if you want a random numbers in the range uh, u to l right which is uh, sorry l to u which is nothing but lower range to upper range what if you want random numbers in this range you what you do is rand mod u minus l plus 1 and then the whole thing plus l well this formula does look pretty clumsy i know that but uh, if you try to reduce this you will see that uh, it mathematically means the same that uh, the lowest number will be l and then the highest number will be u right so uh, you just remember this formula to generate random numbers within a range so in our case what it's going to be is upper range is 10 and then the lower range is 1 right upper range is not included so sorry for this notation it is mathematically this which means that uh, the last number is not included but the number till the previous one is included so it becomes 10 minus 1 plus 1 and over here the upper range is 1 right so now if you do this over here if i try to print this value over here you will be getting numbers which are in the range of 1 to 9 right so oh, let us put a semicolon in the end and we don't need this so we'll just remove this so every time we execute we'll be getting some random numbers which is uh, in the range of 1 to 9 right so here you can see that it's giving us different numbers in the range of 1 to 9 so now uh, what we can do is we can use this and instead of the second player what we'll do is we'll just uh, ask the computer to generate some random slot number and then place our marker over there and then instead of 9 now the loop will run only for 4 times that is because uh, the number of uh, times the loop should run is halved right we are not going to take in inputs for 9 times we are going to take in inputs for 4 times so we need to just uh, run it for 9 over 2 times which is 4 as an integer division if you want to implement a really sophisticated system like the one which Google uses, right? This one, which can think. So if you take a, this uh, impossible level in this uh, particular uh, game and then uh, try to play with Google, you can see that you can never win, right? It, it will either end up in a draw or uh, you lose, right? Now there is no other outcome in this particular. You cannot win, that is for sure. So to implement such a system, there is an algorithm called as min max algorithm so you can try to study about this min max algorithm so sorry it is min max algorithm 
right so uh, you have this particular algorithm so what this essentially does is it will take combinations of games right it will play the game with itself and it will score every game so let's say we have an arbitrary game so let us just clear this let's say we have an arbitrary board so i have an x over here and o over here and then another x over here and o over here and then the computer is playing x so it has to make the next move so what it will do is it will try out all the possible boxes which are unfilled right and there are different outcomes for that so one of the outcomes is let's say i start off with this board so let's change the color so let's say i put an x over here now there are different ways to put o i can either put one over here one over here it is up to me right so every possibility will generate a new set of boards which the computer will play itself right in the memory and then it will score its outcomes so let's say uh, in in case it put x over here and then uh, uh, for the first case you put o over here and then it turns out that uh, after playing such combinations it turns out that uh, if you put x over here you have uh, uh, let's say 10 combinations out of which you won 5 combinations right so this is one of the slots now what it will do is it will keep the statistics and again play it with the next slot which is empty so what it will do is uh, it will just remove these things and then it will play with uh, let's say this particular column so it will put an x over here and then again repeat the same process it will see all the combinations possible and then uh, let's say in this particular column which i marked with red there are again uh, let's say 10 possible outcomes and then it won uh, seven of them right and uh, let's say it played over here uh, let's take some other color let's say this one so it played over here and then in this again there are 10 possible outcomes and out of which it could win only two right and you have another possibility over here or in which 10 possible outcomes it could not win any one right it lost all of them so it won zero now what it will do is it will see all the scores so here it has 70 percent probability right so if you are winning seven games out of 10 it means you have 70 percent probability of winning and here you have 50 here you have zero percent probability and here you have 20 percent probability so it will check the one with the most probability or the most score so if you take into if you talk in terms of numbers here you have five here you have seven 0 and 2 right so it will take the number which is maximum that is this one so it will say that if i put my marker in this particular place i have more chances of winning so it will place it over there so for every move it will calculate all the possibilities and then place the best move and that is how this particular google is using alg that particular algorithm to make its decision so that algorithm even though it is called something else it is actually recursion so if you look at the implementation it is basically recursion which is being implemented right so tic tac toe if you just uh, search for that you will have many uh, different uh, resources to check that out so you uh, check that from one of these resources so what you will see is it is basically implementing recursion it will just go over the boards and then try to implement and then you have a scoring method so uh, i think they have used plus 10 as a score uh, we have used plus 1 over here right we have uh, if we won you just put 1 over here if you don't win you just put minus 1 it means that you won and minus 1 means that you do and you don't want negative scores right we just want positive scores so this is a bit of complicated stuff if you don't understand uh, i don't expect you to understand at this stage but i would definitely recommend you to check that out and try to implement and this one you can try to implement by uh, reducing the number of uh, loops over here and then creating another function so that the ai chooses what slot to put the marker in so hope you enjoyed this video in the next video we will be starting pointers